just have a look at this beauty that we have found hiding in the grass for all of us this morning. It is a citrus swallowtail, the largest butterfly that we get here, although not the largest swallowtail. I happened to learn a new butterfly with my son on top of Maripskop on Thursday. You get the emperor swallowtail, which is almost the same, just a little bit bigger, and the tail streamers are a little bit bigger than this one. So this is the citrus swallowtail, the largest butterfly that we get at Juma. And not too far away, probably about six miles away from the mountains where all those other butterflies occur. Now what's happening here is this particular butterfly needs to warm up. Now what she's done is she's probably slept the night away in the grass, much the same as the leopard using the grass um, to slow the air movements down. Well, the, the phenomenon that air moves slower on the ground due to more resistance from the grass and therefore spreads the smell of the carcass uh, uh, less far away from the, the kill. The butterfly does exactly the same thing. The air movements in the grass are a lot slower and so she will lose a lot less heat to the environment during the night by being low down and in the grass. And that's what she's done now. Now what she's Okay, she's landed over there. She's faced herself east and she's now sitting with her wings open to catch the rays of the sun as they come up. And she's then catching those rays on the wings. And that's what butterfly wings are actually for. The big just solar radiators. The scales on those wings have evolved into these brilliant colored reflective plates that they use to signal to one another and to talk to one another. And this citrus swallowtail is giving you a prime example of just how beautiful they can be. Just have a look at that. Even to the false eyes at the bottom, so closer to you, she's got a series of false eyes there. And that's so that when and if she gets attacked by a bird, the bird will attack the head first and not maim her completely initially, giving her some time to get away. Isn't that just unbelievably awesome? Wow. Here she's closed her wings just to maneuver a little bit better. You can see that she almost disappears completely when her wings are closed like that. Now, called the citrus swallowtail because their caterpillars are very fond of citrus fruits and quite often the caterpillars do some damage in orchards around here. But to be honest with you, I don't mind their caterpillars so much. They've got a beautiful caterpillar. Big green, lovely caterpillar. Right, she's flittering around. Isn't it just been a fantastic morning for these types of things so far, to be quite honest with you? A lovely, lovely, lovely day. Now, we're standing underneath a torchwood. Now, this particular torchwood doesn't have any seeds on it, which is quite weird. I've been waiting for the seeds of, the tor of, the, of these torchwoods to start falling, and this one has disappointed me. Um, last year, none of the torchwood seeds that I looked at could give me any seed and therefore couldn't give me any oil and I couldn't test the flammability of this oil. So I've been waiting an entire year to see if I can find the seeds of another torchwood so I can break them open for you so we can light them and see how flammable the torchwood sea oil is, which apparently is quite flammable. Something I've never tried before. All right, well, since I'm not gonna show you the torchwood seed oil here, <laughs> and uh, James has got those lovely leopard uh, to show you, why don't we send you over to him and I'll catch up with you in a little bit.